collaborative efforts. Yeah? So how do you do this? Yeah? I believe that value addition can happen on two angles. One is the emotional leverage of Ayurveda. And second one is scientific leverage of Ayurveda. In emotional leverage, we have got very strong points of ancient heritage. We have got um, powerful philosophy, which looks very attractive and very convincing. So we can build on that, we can create more awareness of that. But I think that can be done rather easily. Yeah? The other aspect, that is scientific leverage for Ayurveda, I think which requires a lot more collaborative efforts and it might take time. Yeah? What we need to do, and this is a problem which I faced in my real life. Yeah? We all believe naturals are mild, probably right. We believe they are safe. I don't think we have got enough proof for many materials whether they are, proof, uh, whether they are safe. There is a lot of, lot of, what should I say, implicit understanding, but it has not been stated explicitly, documented explicitly. So whenever we wanted to take things forward in industry, our safety function will come and ask, where is the safety? You tell me where is the safety if you want to do a, a human trial. Yeah? And we'll say it is written in Ayurvedic books, it has been published. They say, no, I want A, B, C, D, some 10 studies which will cost a couple of crores of rupees. So you can't take forward. So we need to generate this safety data for, 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 through, uh, through the scientific collaborations. We need to also generate unequivocal proof of efficacy. We need not try to match the philosophies of modern science and Ayurveda. I think that's, that's not required. What is really required is using modern tools generate that evidence for efficacy. If you can succeed in that, I think we'll be able to sell Ayurveda and able to make it global. Yeah? And that's where I think the power of collaborations would come in. Also the limiting factor for collaboration, why industry doesn't collaborate? The worldwide experience tells us that to collaborate, you need certain critical mass for the industry. This is OECD data a few years back, and these are the large companies and these are the small companies. You can see almost all over the world, the large companies tend to collaborate more compared to small companies. Now what's happening in Ayurveda? Ayurveda, we have many companies which are not big enough. So they can't afford to spend large amount of money on R&D, they cannot afford to have long-term projects. Yeah? So we have this kind of a cash 22 situation. We need companies with global scale because unless you have global scale, you cannot have scalable high impact innovations. And unless you have scalable high impact innovations, it's difficult to have companies with global scale. So it's a cash 22 situation and this paradigm needs to be changed and that's where I believe this model, which has worked successfully, in uh, many other scenarios might work. Yeah, you have government policies which will help companies to reach the global scale through various mechanisms. There are various mechanisms, there are tax rebates, there are other promotions, there are soft loans, but I think government has to work with industry to do that. And through academia, through the startup route, and also by encouraging innovations and funding this interaction. I think unless this happens, I don't see Personally, and my view may be wrong, and I'll be happy to be wrong, but going by experiences that I've seen, I don't see this kind of interaction taking off in near future, unless the government plays a very significant role, and I think the Department the Ministry of Ayush and other things, they can do that, and probably, I think one thing I believe, and more and more I started believing in that, that startups can, can play a significant role in this space because they can take more risks, they can ask difficult questions, and in Ayurveda what we need is somebody who will ask different questions, come out with different formats, come out with different processes, come out with different functionalities which are not known today, and, and, and open up that space. And that will be done largely by, not by the classical Ayurveda industry, but the new industry that will emerge out of this. Yeah? But I believe this is not going to happen immediately. That's my, that's my reading of the situation. So what can we do in the midterm? And this is my last slide. What can, what can we do in the intervening time? 
because you don't know how long it will take. So what do we do? Do we wait or do we do something? And my experience in life, because I dealt with this situation in industrial R&D quite a lot, so the first thing is to keep on doing what you believe is right. Whether the situation is favorable or unfavorable, it invariably works. And the right thing to do from experience is between industry and academia, there should be continuous communication. Even when you have long-term collaborations, you need continuous communication. And that makes a huge difference between the success of the project and the failure of the project. Yeah, so continuous communication. We need to have a big ambition. We can't think about small things. We have to have big ambition. We may not achieve it immediately, but big ambition is required. The goals have to be larger. The industry cannot think only about itself. The academy cannot think only about itself. The goal has to be bigger than both. Then only it would work. And therefore, there has to be empathetic outlook towards each other. If it lacks, and if we consider each other as people who are not our friends, not willing to work together, not going to work. So you have to take small actions on our own till the regulatory and the other larger framework sets in. And my belief, and which you have seen in many, many, many scenarios, is many small actions are capable of making big difference. So my request to you, Professor Patwardhan, is in your domain, if you can start, if you can take some of these small actions without worrying about the money, without worrying about the outcome, without worrying about the credit, without worrying about the patent, who takes it, if you start that, I think that will be a great beginning. And the same goes for all. Yeah? And I believe that we need more and more TDU kind of models which are trying to bring, tri trying to kind of, kind of bridge the gap between tradition and the modernity. If you can do that successfully, I believe Ayurveda has a potential which will be at least as large as TCM and has, can transform the world. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sir, thank you very much sure. for this. Uh, experiences. I request Professor Dr. Ramesh Bonde uh, to felicitate uh, Dr. Sinkar. Dr. Ramesh Bonde is a cell biologist who worked in the National Center for Cell Sciences and he's research director in D.Y. Patel University. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sinkar, sir. <clears throat> Let us end the session by a small video clip that is shared by the speaker who could not join because of Floods in Kerala, Dr. Ram Manohar. I request Akash a great to start this to video clip. Before that, to be uh, the symposium to will be converted into an e symposium, and, and many people, those who could not attend so today, they can access the, from YouTube channel of the Center for of our IUCOE. And of course, we will request all the, uh, all the speakers for their formal consent and then only we will host their video recordings. Here I remember two poems by Robert Frost. One is stopping by the woods. He says that the uh, miles to go before I sleep, the woods are lovely, dark and deep. Another poem he says, the path that was not taken. And here are the people who have taken the path, very different path, and Dr. Ram Manohar is sharing his journey. Yes. Thank you, Akash. It is a short clip of his talk which he shared. Achara has a vision that is rooted in tradition and Yes, yes lunch is set, so no problem. Lunch is set, sir. <laughs> Sorry for this delay, but Okay, Akash, then if it is, yes, fine. Yet at the same time, embraces modernity. The goal is to make Ayurveda relevant in contemporary times. So we have derived the word Achara, which of course is an acronym for Amrita Center for Advanced Research in Ayurveda, based on the traditional concept of Acharya. Achinotihi Shastra Dhan Achare Sthapayatyata 
ध्रुवम प्रचरते शास्त्र तस्माद आचार उच्चते आचार इज सो कॉल्ड because it is focused on harvesting the foundational concepts of the shastra of ayurveda and to establish it in practice so that the knowledge of ayurveda disseminates in society so that's the meaning of the word acharya so translation is the key focus translating basic science into applied science translating textual knowledge into clinical applications that's the key focus of acharya at the very outset i would like to underline the fact that ayurveda is not an ivory tower for research in ayurveda acharya aims to nurture research at the roots the ultimate goal is to channelize the benefits of research to society and for this we have to start with the torch bearers of the knowledge of ayurveda itself the young aspirants therefore research at ayurveda begins at the level of education nurturing the research mindset in the young students of ayurveda so we can also interpret acharya as the flow of knowledge you know right from the point of creation to the level of imparting it to the students and its education to its application in clinical practice and finally dissemination to the general public at the level of pracharana so this was classically called as atithi bodha acharana and pracharana and this is the workflow of research that is envisaged at acharya it's a very important uh, vision for us at acharya that research is not an add on but rather the foundation of education and that's what acharya aims to establish so research is not to be introduced at a later stage of education In fact this vision is inspired by the tradition of education in ancient India itself. Tarka which deals with methodologies of research, epistemology and ontology was actually taught first in ancient days and only then the student was initiated in the subject. So the study of any subject was initiated only after the research mindset was cultivated in the student. and it is our strong belief that tarka should be presented as research methodology not as philosophy at the very beginning of the study of ayurveda we should introduce tarka as the classical method for research however today the subject is taught first and research is introduced later tarka or padartha is not even discussed as an approach to research in order for ayurveda to develop fruitfully for its applications to benefit society in a creative manner it's really important that modern research methods are integrated into the framework of the classical method of tarka and this is what we have envisaged at acharya everything begins with aptopadesha which is very similar to modern review of literature as charaka says purvam aptopadesha jnanam from aptopadesha we gain the working knowledge of the subject which is an update knowledge of the subject and from that knowledge tata pratyaksha anumana bhyam pariksha we bring that knowledge into the context of pariksha or investigation which is you know generating the research question and hypothesis in modern research parallel and once you have brought it into the context of pariksha and pariksha and once you have a proper research question and hypothesis then we do pratyaksha and anumana which is the observation of data collection and data analysis or interpretation and from this process we get validated knowledge or vijnana and this is evidence so jnanam becomes vijnana knowledge becomes evidence and this evidence based 
knowledge is applied in practice and that application is called as yukti and the practitioners who are applying this knowledge they create the tantras or the shastras and this is the process of publication and these tantras or shastras become the aptopadesha again to initiate the new cycle of research so this method of revalidation of ayurveda in a cyclical fashion is called as parampara and the transmission of this knowledge from one individual to the other for the process of revalidation is called as sampradaya so acharya aims to revive this process of sampradaya and the parampara which is actually based on the concept of research which is grounded in the thoughts of tarka radha ravi integra